Welcome everybody, my name is Sean Wolfe, I'm Director of Estates and Sustainability at Kingston University. Um, the idea for Townhouse actually goes back to 2012 when we were uh, carrying out the last phase of campus development. The building was conceived as a statement of confidence, something that would properly announce the presence of the University in Kingston. Our main library at the time was inadequate for our students. Um, our dance facilities were accommodated in rented space, which was not really fit for purpose. Uh, we didn't have a proper front door. The university didn't have a proper front door. And we had strong civic aspirations. We wanted Townhouse to be a key part of the fabric of the town. So we recognised the importance of excellent design to help us achieve these ambitions. So we commissioned a design competition with the Royal Institute of British Architects. That competition concluded in 2013 and we appointed Grafton Architects in January of 2014. In 2015 we appointed Wilmot Dixon to build the building under a pre-construction services agreement. One of the biggest challenges that we had to face with this building was actually convincing everybody that it was a good idea to lose 180 car parking spaces to produce the civic landscaped park that you see directly behind me that runs the whole way along the front of the building. We also had an issue with planning the first time round but the revised scheme received unanimous approval. In terms of successes, the, the successes have been many for the building. Uh, one of the key ones from my perspective is the way that the building has supported the university during the COVID pandemic. The flexibility of the design meant that overlaying social distancing was actually relatively straightforward. And very importantly from our student perspective, the openness of the building meant that people felt safe in there even in times of low occupancy. The building was actually a beacon for the university during those dark months. It has become the front door to the university. Um, as well as its civic heart and it has greatly improved our links with the local community. The sheer quality of the building has exceeded everybody's expectations. We have a very high proportion of commuting students here at Kingston University. So Townhouse has become the destination of choice in between learning events because of the excellence of the social learning space and the study space that's in the building. I have no doubt that this is transforming the learning outcomes for our students and I'm really looking forward to a research project that we're doing with Wilmot Dixon, the Higher Education Design Quality Forum and the Association of University Directors of Estates, which is looking at the link between excellent buildings and educational outcomes. So I'm, now, I'm going to hand you over now to Tony Mingoya from Wilmot Dixon. Tony has been a member of the team on this project right from the very beginning so he's very well qualified to talk you through a virtual tour of Townhouse at Kingston University. Thank you very much. Welcome everybody, my name's Tony Mingoya. I'm the Senior Operations Manager at Wilmot Dixon and here we are outside Kingston University's landmark building, the Townhouse. I'd like to show you around some of the key areas and spaces that make up this uh, very unique building, which I'm sure you'll find very interesting. So we're currently stood in the main atrium entrance area of the building. A whole sense of openness starts as you enter through the large revolving doors and approach the main stairs. There are no barriers or security turnstiles and this adds to the free flowing layout of the whole building. So the townhouse encompasses a variety of spaces and these were all formed using the, the precast key components, beams, columns and double T's. So this includes a library area, which extends over three floors, a performance teaching space, a 300 seat auditorium with dance studios, study rooms, project spaces and cafes, all of which we will show you during our tour.
So the first place we're going to show you is the impressive courtyard area. This is accessed off the main atrium area via the large sliding acoustic doors behind me. The doors that we've just passed through are acoustically treated and are openable to allow the two spaces to be joined and opened up to form a very large open area. This magnificent space is used for lectures, presentations and performances. The extensive terrace seating that you can see behind me was manufactured off-site again by PCE and brought in and assembled with the steps as you can see. We're located on the first floor now of the building. This is home to shared resource centre, student services and access to the dance studios. The main feature of this atrium space is once again the main stairs that you see behind me. The main staircase is a great example of the project team collaborating to provide a workable solution to a buildability issue that we had on the project. The original concept for the stairs was a precast solution but due to their weight and actual span, this meant transport and installation would be very, very difficult. So the team reviewed the design and came up with a hybrid solution that consisted of steel frame support with screed trays for the treads and a suspended precast slab that was fixed to the underside. We're in one of the three large dance studios located on the first floor of the building. These can be subdivided into smaller spaces to accommodate different class sizes. The main feature of these areas is that there are box within box construction. These are all acoustically treated for two reasons. Uh, one, due to the proximity of the library, which is to the side and above us. And secondly, the uh, proximity of the residence, as you can see through the windows. We're at second floor level now uh, and this is a great opportunity to talk about the components of the precast concrete fr frame that were designed and installed by PCE. These are obviously manufactured off-site and brought to site on a just-in-time basis. So the frame's kit of parts were mainly precast columns at 450 square, varying depths of beams and of course the standard double T-beams. The grid of the project was set out on a 7 by 6 4 metre grid which lent itself to these components in terms of spans and sizes. Whilst the dimensions were consistent for these elements, the inclusion of the service elements such as conduits and drainage pipes within the columns meant that only two columns on the entire project were identical. However, the concrete finishes did remain consistent in terms of the surface appearance and colour. This was notable on the external facade areas, which due to the planning conditions meant that they had to match the Surrey County Council building, which was originally Portland Stone.
We're now at level three of the main library area within the building. One of the key features here is the cantilevered floating staircase behind me. Um, this was fabricated off-site and was lowered into the building just before the envelope was closed in. It's constructed of 15 millimeter plate steel and due to its size and weight was delivered in sections. The main feature of this as you can see is the floating aspect and that was fixed by cantilevering off the beams at levels 3, 4 and 5. Again done in conjunction with PCE and the structural engineers. I'm now stood on the four floor roof garden, which is termed the, the reading garden. This is a communal space that's used by the students and public alike. Uh, it's only fitting that I talk about the environmental aspects of the project. The building achieved a BRIAM excellent certification. Some of the elements that made this up included the brown roofs, the PV arrays, extensive cycle storage, and showers in conjunction with the local go cycle scheme some of the other elements included the thermally active building system which controlled the the heat and cooling of the building 